For over 30 years, the Pathfinder Shuttle Stack has been an integral part of the human spaceflight story at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. While a lot of attention is often placed upon the Pathfinder test article itself, every part of the shuttle stack played a pivotal role in the shuttle program. Pathfinder's pair of solid rocket boosters are no exception. They were an experimental booster. There were a very small number of these made. The experimental ones were sort of a super lightweight version. And instead of being steel sections joined together, they're a fiber wound composite material. So like a really fancy version of fiberglass that makes up the structure of each of these little cylinders. And each one was about 20,000 pounds lighter per booster than the standard flight boosters. The Space Shuttle solid rocket boosters were integral to getting the shuttle orbiters into space. The Space Shuttle main engines could not provide enough thrust alone to leave Earth, so the solid rocket boosters were strapped to either side of the external tank to give it that extra lift. However, unlike the Space Shuttle main engines, which were liquid fuel to be able to throttle the engines up and down and restart them once in space, the solid rocket boosters were filled with a solid propellant, meaning once they were ignited, they would not stop until empty. This was nothing new in the realm of rocket science, but the engineers at NASA Marshall Space Flight Center, who oversaw the development and production of the solid rocket boosters, were presented with a new challenge, how to make the boosters reusable. This was a first attempt for NASA to make reusable propulsion systems. It's reusable and, you know, recovery, all those things we had to learn how to do. And we had to learn how to then refurbish the motors. We'd take them back to Thiokol out of Utah clean the propellant out, put new propellant in, then we ship the motors back to the Cape and stack them. And so uh, it, it was an interesting challenge, how you clean the motor cases, how you put the new propellant back in, and how long can you re reuse the cases. So, you know, those were some of the reusability challenges that we, we had to deal with. The experimental solid rocket boosters at the Rocket Center were meant to become the next evolution of the boosters, much like the lightweight and super lightweight external tanks. But when the Challenger accident occurred in January of 1986, development was halted on the experimental solid rocket boosters. It was concluded that Challenger's solid rocket boosters were at fault for the accident when it was discovered that two O-rings that were used to seal a joint on one of the boosters had failed due to the severe cold. This led NASA to begin a redesign of the solid rocket boosters to ensure that this would never happen again. The highlight of my career was how successful we were in the redesign. And I was confident after the redesign that we will not have a motor problem on the shuttle again because we tested all the hardware. We did flaw testing where we intensely built flaws in the O-rings and in the motor. And that gave us great confidence that, you know, the motor is going to be fine. These people depend on us to do it right. And we didn't do it right a couple of times, but we learned in the process. While the experimental solid rocket boosters never got to fly, the work that was done on them helped inform the redesign of the solid rocket boosters post-Challenger. The very cool part about these though is that where these segments come together, it's something called a field joint. The joint design on these boosters was the design that the joints were transformed into or were redesigned to be after the Challenger accident. So they did adopt a little bit of the technology that these experimental boosters had in order to redesign the connections between the flight booster segments to make them safer. In the late 1980s, when work began on the Pathfinder shuttle stack, NASA Marshall loaned the U.S. Space and Rocket Center two of the experimental lightweight solid rocket boosters to place into cradles on either side of the external tank, completing the stack. This made Huntsville, Alabama the only place other than the Cape and Florida where a full shuttle stack could be seen. However, in 1999, NASA found themselves in need of parts for their solid rocket boosters and came to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center for help. A museum exhibit is headed to space. NASA is getting ready to use a part of the shuttle exhibit at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center to launch the real space shuttle. And after the ships got the boosters back to shore, they found out that some of them were bent, the forward skirt, the top part. So they needed a replacement. They took the top part, the forward skirts, right there below the nose cone, the only museum pieces that will fly. It does have an interesting history in, in that sense too, because it was able to contribute to flight after they'd been retired and put on display. It does sometimes get misconstrued that the boosters were taken. 
and we put replica boosters in place. But the forward thrust drums and nose caps are replicas, and one of the askerts is a replica, but the boosters themselves are the original boosters that were put in place. With the solid rocket boosters having been on display in the elements for over three decades, the time has come to restore these artifacts. The Pathfinder restoration project started in 2021 with the removal of the Pathfinder orbiter from the stack, followed in 2022 by the stripping of the old foam on the external tank. Work is now ongoing to strip the paint from the solid rocket boosters to better assess their condition. If all is well, the solid rocket boosters will be repainted with new stenciling to add the kind of roll patterns that the flight used Space Shuttle solid rocket boosters had when launched. As NASA moves forward with the Space Launch System, the most powerful rocket ever built, the legacy of the solid rocket boosters continues with the upgraded boosters being used to help the Space Launch System carry humankind back to the moon and eventually onto Mars. Through the story of the solid rocket boosters on display at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, guests will be able to see firsthand the evolution from the space shuttle to the space launch system when the full shuttle stack is once more on display for the public.